with that out of the way, it's time for an interactive portion of the video. And here's where I've been getting these questions a lot from people who watch these shows live and they watch my videos and they know that I'm covering the streaming wars. I'm very serious about covering the streaming wars. And they always ask, like, Kevin, what services, like, when it comes to the stream services, do I need to have and which ones could I live without? And I think that's an interesting question because here's the thing. I subscribe to a lot of the streaming networks because I, kind of like cable, I like to cast my net wide. But there are some services that I watch way more than others. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to make a tier list and I'm going to rank how necessary I think it is for the average consumer to have these services. And I put as many as I could think of, and there's so many of out there, some of which are free, which by the way, we'll be doing a separate tier list for the free apps. But I figured of the main apps, you know, your Netflixes, your Hulus, your Apple TV Plus, I figured I would rank from S to F, and S is like, this is absolutely required. I believe you should have this. You know, that, that I figured we, we would rank these things. And I will have to take note that, you know, there's certain things that are a little bit more, um, how should we put it, niche or um, specific in what they're doing. And I will make note of that. But let's start, for example, with Netflix. Like, in terms of, you know, A to F was S being above and beyond, couldn't live without the service, and F being... I could really care less about it. Where would I put Netflix? And here's where I found myself kind of shocked. I actually would find myself putting Netflix in the B category because I've always had Netflix and I probably always will. I don't watch nearly that much to Netflix anymore. And their original programming is not as much of a draw as it used to be. Now, granted, they still have a show that can have like a cultural impact once in a while. The most recent being The Tiger King. But I don't find myself watching Netflix much these days, and so I kind of realize, even though I will probably always have Netflix, it's not a must-have as it normally would be. Compared to Hulu, I actually use Hulu all the time. Hulu gets used probably once a day, because it's got you know, Family Guy on it, and it has the Handmaid's Tale. I love their original shows. I love their animation selection. They've got some anime on there. You do have to watch some ads, or you could pay a little extra for no ads, but I, and Hulu also has a live TV option if you want to add more money onto it, so I think Hulu is a must-have. Then you get something to, like, Prime Video. I, I would say Prime Video is a C- no, no, let's take it back. I'll be fair. It's a B. Prime does have some good shows. Marvelous Miss Maisel, Undone. I love those shows. I mean, the biggest thing holding Prime back is, frankly, it's a mess. Like, the, with the shows, the seasons are broken up by individual shows. You know, you have to kind of make, make note which ones are Prime shows, because if it doesn't have, like, a Prime banner on it, it costs extra. So it's kind of a mess when it, when you think about the setup and everything, but Prime Prime Video is pretty good. I have to but now we get the HBO Max. This is another one that I I absolutely love this service. I mean, I I've watched more movies on this thing than almost anything else, and it's got a great animation library. They're uploading new things. It has all of South Park. I really really love HBO Max. Now let's get to Disney Plus. And Disney Plus is, I'm going to put that on a C. Now, here's why I'm going to put Disney Plus on a C. It's because Disney Plus is one of those services that does not make a very compelling case for you to keep it. Now, I have paid for three years up front, but if I didn't pay for that three years up front and I had to budget a little bit, I think Disney Plus would be one of the first things I would cancel. And one of the prob problems is because Disney Plus, like, what do people talk about when it comes to Disney Plus? Oh, it has all the classic movies, it has the shorts, it has TV shows, it has all this, it's like, yeah. The stuff that people talk about the most, Star Wars, Pixar, Marvel, 
I have all of it on Blu-ray. Some of it 4K, some of it 3D, and I don't watch that stuff on Disney+. Plus. And when it comes to original content, Disney doesn't have much. I like their original shorts, but they're, well, short. M Muppets Now has the potential to be good. Um, but yeah, they have otherwise The Mandalorian, um, Diary, of a, Diary of a Future President. They've got that Howard movie coming out. I'll look forward to that. But And they have Hamilton. I do like, I did like Hamilton, but Disney Plus doesn't make a strong case for itself most of the time. For So I would probably, if I didn't have like the annual plans, I'd probably be canceling that one. All right, moving up next, uh, we have Peacock. I'm going to put Ke Peacock in the C category. I do like some of the stuff on there, but the three t price tier is a little confusing. There's not much on there. Uh, and it has room to grow. There's almost no original content either. But it's also free, so for a lot of people, that will make a huge, huge, huge difference. Now let's do YouTube Premium. Um, YouTube Premium probably squeezes down to a D. Now I will probably never get rid of YouTube Premium, but there are two reasons why I keep it around. I like watching YouTube without ads. And I can watch without ads and support the creator, so I like doing that. Also, it comes with YouTube Music, which, uh, you know, the funny thing is I have YouTube Premium because when I subscribed to Google Play, it gave me YouTube Red and YouTube Music for free. And now they have since renamed YouTube Red to YouTube Premium. They, have, they are shuttering Google Play Music, and YouTube Music is going to be Google's music app. So, uh, but... In terms of original content, Cobra Kai is moving to Netflix. So there's not a lot of reason for the average person, I feel, to have a YouTube Premium account. Uh, now you have Vudu. Now, Vudu is, you know, it, it kind of depends how you view Vudu on this one. When it comes to, like, original content and things like that, it's a D. And otherwise, you're buying everything. However, it's free, and I have to say, when I redeem my digital codes and I buy movies, I always do it through Vudu if possible, because I, I do like the Vudu platform. So, Vudu gets a D just because it's not a really original product, and it's not, it, you know, in terms of the original content streaming thing, it's by far the weakest. I think the only original thing they have is Mr. Mom, to be perfectly honest. So, that, that's where I'm kind of li listening there. Now, Criterion Channel... I would normally put this as an S, but I'm putting it as an A, and I'm putting it as an A just slightly below S for a couple minor but important reasons. First, the layout is pretty confusing. They don't categorize things very well. Um, they categorize things by, like, directors and actors and certain celebrational months, which is fine, but it makes searching for things a real hassle. Also, things rotate frequently on Criterion Channel. Th movies are being added and leaving every single month, and you kind of have to keep a scorecard. If you have, like, a queue, you really have to be paying attention, like, okay, what's leaving, and how long do I have to watch that? And it changes all the time. So I do believe that Criterion Channel um, could be a little bit more user-friendly. That said... It has a lot of great stuff. It has classic movies, foreign films, documentaries. It has these very, very fascinating interviews with filmmakers. So I, I eat the Criterion Channel up quite a bit. Um, now another now stars. I think stars falls in the D category for me. I actually got six months of stars for twenty five dollars when the pandemic started, and I've only watched like a couple movies. I mean, there is stuff on there, but I just don't find myself watching it very much. Their original shows uh, don't really interest me that much. I liked Boss with Kelsey Grammer, and then it had a cliffhanger ending, and I was like, well, great, that, that didn't mean anything. Um, so, and I did like, it, it was fun to see Stan and Ollie also, the Stars logo kind of pops up fairly frequently, and in the age of streaming, that shouldn't be the case, but, you know. Okay, so Apple TV Plus. I'm putting this... I was originally going to put this in C, but I'm going to put it under B. I'm going to put it under B for two main reasons. One, 
it's cheap. At $5 a month, this is probably the cheapest service. This is one of the cheapest services on this list. And the other reason is because while it doesn't have much, what it does have is high quality. Most of the Apple TV Plus shows, minus a C here and there, um, are very, very good. I love Central Park. I love that Greyhound movie. I love that Beastie Boys documentary. I, that M. Night Shyamalan show, Servant, was really good. I enjoyed the morning show. Again, it's not much, but it's good, and it's only $5 a month. So, app, But w another thing where it's going to become a problem for some people, though, is like it's pretty easy to spend $5 a month on this thing and not notice it because it's so cheap. And then you don't really use this thing for a while. So that, but I'm going to put it B because, you know, it's like I'm sure that will improve at some point. Now then, uh, let's look at Crunchyroll. I'm going to put Crunchyroll at A. Crunchyroll has a lot, a lot of good anime on it. And for like 60 bucks a year, you can watch it ad free. Big downside, most of it is subtitled. So if you do not like reading subtitles, Crunchyroll might not be for you. For you, that if you want dubbed, you might want Funimation Now, which not only has a lot of dubbed anime and subbed anime, it has some of the heavy hitters. It has Dragon Ball Z. It has, um, I think they've added Naruto. It has One Piece. It has, it, a Berserk movie is coming, I, I hear. And Funimate, me and my wife are watching Escaflone on it right now. So, um, ooh, uh, sorry, I don't know what happened there. Uh, but... Yeah, so if, if you're an anime fan, these are definitely very nice to have. Funimation now is like I think like six dollars a month, so crunchy roll. Or you can get like the annual subscription. Now, when it comes to anime, you have High Dive, and High Dive is frankly not great. It's got a, it does have some good shows. But it has some problems. Switching from English to Japanese is not easy. Um, the fast forward and rewind buttons are a pain. The interface is pretty lousy, to be honest. One of the reasons I keep High Dive, though, is because of its price. You can get a whole year of it for $48, which is nothing, really, when you get down to it. And I, I use it probably the least out of all the streaming services I have. And But it's there, and once in a while you turn it on, and you can have, watch some anime for a cheap price. Now, we also have Broadway HD, which I'm surprised Hamilton didn't come to this thing. Broadway HD is exactly as it sounds. For $100 a year, you have a bunch of Broadway shows you can stream. Now, this will obviously depend how much you like Broadway. I personally do, so I'm putting it under B also for Broadway. You know, just being kind of cute. But, you know, that's... That's just, if you like Broadway, then Broadway HD is there. Again, I'm surprised Hamilton didn't go there, but then Disney Plus overpaid for it, I think. So, anyway, then you have DC Universe. I'm going to put DC Universe as, I'm going to put that as an F. Because there's really no reason to have it anymore. And by the way, I think this app will be gone sooner rather than later. I think they're starting to move all the programs to HBO Max. I don't even think this is going to be a thing anymore. But DC Universe was like... I think a misguided effort. Look, I love Batman, I love Superman, I love the Justice League, I love Wonder Woman, Flash, I, I love all those characters. Do I like them enough to have a, their own streaming service? Probably not. Now, DC Universe did also allow you to have access to DC Comics, it should be noted that, so with both a show and a comics app. But then, on the other hand, Crunchyroll also lets you have manga, and Crunchyroll is just a far better service overall, so I don't think the DC Universe is worth much, and I think it's going to not stick around. Another service that I personally have no use for is ESPN+. Plus. But full disclosure, I do not watch sports. So if you like sports, this could easily become an A or an S tier app. I think the one thing that ESPN is like maybe a little plus a little bit shaky on is that I, I'm not aware if it has too many live games. But ESPN does have like a lot of sports programming, so if that's your thing, ESPN Plus is for you. For the most part, though, but I'm not going to do much with it. Now, one service that I personally like, but I'm going to give it like a low grade, is 
Fandor. That's going to be a C. And Fandor is a site that picked up foreign films, older movies, documentaries, shorts. And they actually shared the profits of the company 50-50 with the filmmakers, depending on how much people watched it. That showed where their heart was. Unfortunately, that was not a sustainable business model, and the company was bought. Now, interestingly, we don't know who bought the company. They've never taken the service down. It's only $60 a year, so it's not exactly expensive. But it's not being updated anymore either, so it's kind of hard to recommend. And then we have Quibi, and Quibi is just an awful, awful service. I mean, this could is the one that has the most potential to bump up. That Fugitive show isn't terrible. The Reno 911 is really funny. But they need to get away from this phone concept. They need to put it on TVs. And they just need to make better shows and ignore the gimmick. Maybe the bite-sized entertainment thing would work. YouTube is a thing. The Da Vinci Code was a well-read book. And those were super short chapters. But I think for the most part, Quibi was just misguided. So... When it comes to me personally recommending streaming services, I consider Hulu and HBO Max. You must have them. Uh, afterwards, I think Criterion Channel, Crunchyroll, and Funimation. If you like this type of stuff, it's interesting how that worked out with the A. That is also pretty strongly get. Uh, when it comes to B, uh, these are things that you may, might not need, need, but they're definitely nice to have. We have Netflix, Prime Video, Apple TV+, Plus, and Broadway HD. Now, the C level, that's, um, that's pretty much like, you know, they're good but only if you can afford them and you might not want to keep them around all year round. You've got your Disney Plus, your Peacock, your High Dive, your Fandor. Under D, I mean, these things still have things that are worth getting about them, but you won't be spending much time with them, and that's the YouTube Premium, uh, the Voodoo, or the Stars. Well, really, when you fall under this category, like, again, with Premium, I obviously use that all the time, but it's not like there's any exclusive content. And Voodoo has a little bit of exclusive content, but you mainly use it for digital copies. And then under the I just don't recommend at all is DC Universe, excuse me, ESPN Plus, and Quibi. Although, again, I'm not a sports fan, so if you are a sports fan, it could easily come up here. Just want to let you know. So anyway, those are my rankings for all the streaming services that I can think of at the moment in the streaming war. I will do another one for the streaming services that are free, though. So we will do that probably next week. In the meantime... What about you? Which, How would you rank these services? Which ones could you not live without? I'd love to know. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly.